What's up guys, this is your Daily Techie here to provide you with a tutorial on how to navigate in Linux Mint 14. This video is going to be used for if you've just converted from Windows to Linux and you're trying to learn more about it and you know you don't know exactly where to go. Um, I've already actually done this video and I have to redo it because my volume was all the way too high. Which is funny because my last video my volume was way too low so hopefully this is just about right. Um, you will notice that in your top left hand corner, you're going to have three icons. I believe they're going to be trash, computer, and uh, home. I've, uh, I've deleted those icons from my desktop because I like my desktop to be clean. So what we're going to go ahead and do is uh, I'm going to right click and you're going to notice you have create new folder, self-explanatory, create launcher. This is a uh, application used for um, making a, a desktop icon that you can open up a specific a uh, specific program you know you browse to the programs you want or what you downloaded you know or whatever but you don't have to get into that right now create a new document <laughs> open in terminal like I said we're not gonna get into open in terminal yet that's for more advanced stuff I'll get into that later organize desktop by name keep a line just change desktop background you can click on that if you want to uh, change your desktop background and it already comes preloaded with uh, several backgrounds. If you want to go ahead and skip into some things, I'm going to go ahead and click on all settings. And then this is going to bring you to basically, um, if you're familiar with Windows, you have like your Windows, uh, you know, like themes and stuff like that. This is something very similar. Um, you have your themes, your Windows, your backgrounds, keyboard, general, you know, workspaces. I'll show you workspaces in just a moment. And, uh, you know that's basically self-explanatory. We're gonna go ahead and get out of there. I'm gonna go ahead and show you workspaces real quick. What this is is if you click in your top left-hand corner, you will notice that if you if you look, there's a tiny little ripple effect. And I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna add one, and I'm gonna add a workspace. And then I got workspace two. Okay, so anything I open up on workspace one. So if I open up Mozilla, okay, and I'm gonna minimize it, and then I'm gonna go back to my other workspace. And it's not there. So basically, what this is used for is uh, if you're doing schoolwork and everything on your workspace one, and then you got your music and everything loaded on your workspace two, you have it that way so that way nothing gets lost or confused. Or if you're married and you're watching porn, then you can just go into the other workspace and you know that'll work out as well. And we're gonna go ahead and click on menu and go to all applications. <coughs> These are the applications that are going to be preloaded into Linux Mint 14 for you. The only ones that you will not, the ones you will not have that I know so far as I'm scrolling will is Bleachbit and um, Audacious. These are programs I've downloaded. Bleachbit is a uh, program similar to uh, CCleaner. If you're familiar with CCleaner, this is a program very similar to that. So that way you can clean out your files and you know uh, cookies and all that other stuff. This right here is to create an installation disk. <laughs> Basically doing the same thing as my previous video, but on a disk. Your backup tools, this is a media uh, collection application that's something similar to, you know, using uh, Audacious or something like that. Um, I haven't used it. Bersaro, uh Burn DVDs, Self Explanatory, Brightness Unlock, Calculator, of course. Cinema settings, as I showed you before about the themes and stuff like that, the color of everything, just you should probably leave that the same. Date and time, my date and time is on military time, so I should probably change that. Uh, desktop sharing details these are basically like if you're pressing your start menu in Windows and you're clicking my computer this is something uh, very similar basically the Linux version of doing that and that's what shows up and I'm gonna exit all that and I'm gonna go back to uh, where it was and then I'm gonna keep scrolling down disk usage analyzer basically that just shows what your you know disk are using your actual disk Displays, document viewer, domain blocker, files. Files are basically uh, going to be not that confusing for you. You got your, your your documents that you've made, your downloads, your music, everything like that already in there. Then if you look on your left, you got your computer, which you're, you're already home. Desktop, file system, trash, self-explanatory. We're going to get out of that. Go back to all applications. Anyway, I keep going down. And files. You got your uh, Firefox web browser. Now, Firefox comes loaded onto Linux Mint 14. This is already there, so you don't have to download that. 
and I've downloaded this game called Fretz on Fire. I'm gonna delete it because I'm not good at it. Uh, GIMP image editor basically, you know, uh, edit images and stuff. It's really, uh, it, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna say advanced, but it's not like using paint. You know, you can do a lot more with it. I've actually used that on Windows. So if you're using Windows and you're just interested in Linux, you can actually download GIMP for free from the GIMP website. And Gparted, Gparted is a uh, device or a program used to partition and format like your hard drives and USB cards, USB sticks, or whatever the case is. And if my video sucks and you you know you don't like any of it, you can click on the help button and you can watch them, uh, you know, tutorials or what you know, read about Linux and whatever. Ice T Web Control Panel. I'm not even. I don't, I don't even know. Image Viewer keyboard layout language support LibreOffice is basically like using uh, open office or Microsoft Word so if you're used to that if you want to go ahead and click on that just so I can show you what it looks like it's uh, it's actually pretty nice you know it's not too much of a transition at all from using Microsoft Word and it still has you know everything like you would expect it to I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of that exit out of that okay and go back to menu all applications. I'm gonna scroll down. La -di da da. Okay, and mouse to touch maps, movie player, self-explanatory. Login to create a new login. Basically, you know, like Windows 7 users or Windows users and stuff like that. It's the same thing. You can make a new login for a different person. <laughs> La da da da. And take a screenshot. You can uh, you can screenshot like you could with your iPhone or iPad or whatever. You can do the same thing on your desktop with using that. Software manager, this is really important. I'm gonna go through that as soon as I finish up this. System settings. Your tomboy notes basically, you know, right you click start, accessories notes, same deal. Unit Booten is a device as a program used for uh converting your USB stick to uh make it bootable. And so is USB image writer. And XChat X IRC is a uh, chat room that comes preloaded in here. Okay, and we're going to go back up to Software Manager. I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to put in my password. <coughs> and basically, what this is is, uh, you know, full of uh, programs and stuff for you to use, and they're, they're all free, you know. You got sound and video, graphics, office, programming, science and education, fonts, system tools, accessories, games, featured, all packages. You click on featured, and these are the featured ones that they come with. That I mean, well, not that they come with, but they what they feature for you that most people are going to use. I hear that Oprah is a really good web browser for you to use as far as Linux goes. If you want to give that a try, go ahead. And if you do prefer that more, then after you use it, then you can just delete Firefox by clicking on any application that is installed with a green check mark. So I'm going to click on that, and you can click uh, remove to remove any application that you don't want that's already uh, preloaded on to uh, Linux itself. So we're going to go ahead and get out of that, and I'm going to go back, make sure I didn't skip anything. And I'm, I pretty much got everything covered. Now the terminal is, if you don't know what that means, that's basically like using your uh, your CMD on your, your Windows uh, computer. But with a lot more things tied in together that you can do. You can actually remove applications from there, install applications, there's all kinds of stuff. I'll get into those later. I'll click out of that. If you look at your bottom right hand corner if you're user if you're uh if you're used to Windows, like I said, you'll have Windows updates, you know, on your Windows computer. This is the same thing but for Linux. And I'm up to date. As you can see there's a check mark, so I'm just gonna exit out of that. But when you download Linux, you probably will need to uh, download these updates because there have been security updates loaded for Linux already. And your volume, you're connected to the inter uh, I'm connected to a wired network because I'm using a, a desktop. <coughs> and your settings, troubleshoot anything that you have a problem with, uh, problems with, and no new notifications. So that's basically a standard basic tutorial. I really hope that uh, helped you out. If it didn't, still give me a like and comment. And if you found this video entertaining, uh, please subscribe. Thank you, everybody, and have a great day.